Hey everybody, it's Gamalad, and today we are here to discuss my thoughts and predictions for Nintendo's E3 event. I thought I'd post this video today, seeing as I'm still trying to play catch up in the story of seasons after losing about four hours of gameplay in my Let's Play, so this is gonna be the video for today. We're gonna be discussing my thoughts, my opinions, and what I think Nintendo will end up showing at E3 this year, and some predictions and some wild cards they're gonna throw at us. So, without any further ado, let's get started on this by discussing about the Wii U first. Alright, so to start off, let's get some of the obvious and easy stuff out of the way. The first thing I know Nintendo is definitely going to show off is a new Star Fox trailer, and showing off more gameplay and details about Star Fox U, and I predict that game will probably come out this fall. And I do believe that Nintendo and will have this game co-developed by Platinum Games, as I know Kamaya has been telling people to leave him alone about Star Fox, but I think that's a way, you know, to you know get people to stop thinking Platinum's going to work on it, and they're gonna have Platinum work on it. So that's what I'm thinking right there, is Platinum's gonna help co-develop Star Fox. It'll be out this fall. It'll probably even have some sort of online multiplayer. And I, I even think there's going to be some Star Fox Adventure gameplay mechanics in there, along with the standard traditional Star Fox mechanics in there. Another thing we're probably for sure going to see is Devil's Third release date, which I think will either come out late summer or early in the fall. I mean, I haven't really heard much about Devil's Third since last year, but um, there's a lot, there's a lot of potential behind that game, especially the multiplayer aspect. And I am actually pretty excited to play the game because of the multiplayer, believe it or not. And I think that's another game that'll probably, I guess, that will come out, you know, probably late like summer, early fall. And I think the game will look a hundred times better than it did at last E3. Apparently, they're reworking the entire game with better graphics and apparently a new engine specifically for the Wii U. Because what we saw at last year's E3 was more so of the um, gameplay footage from the PS3 and 360 version before that version of the game was sent to development hell. So we're, I'm kind of glad Nintendo is fishing out some of those these development hell games like Bayonetta 2 and Devil's Third. And another thing we'll definitely see for sure is info on the Splatoon DLC. And I think you're going to go the Mario Kart 8 route. I know a lot of the DLC was not confirmed for until August, but I do think they're going to end up pushing that DLC back a little bit to maybe about July, um, or maybe even late June, when, the, when the, um, all the competitive DLC will be out for the game. So that's um, a thought for it right there. And uh, another thing we'll probably see for sure is a Yoshi's Woolly World release date and announcements for the Yoshi Amiibos that will be used for the game. And I think that game will also come out probably in the fall, so there's going to be a lot of games coming out later this year for the Wii U, which is pretty good. And let's see. Some other stuff I think we'll probably see, well for sure we'll see, is Project Robot and Project Guard. Um, I, th I think Miyamoto said Project Robot is almost done. I'm more excited for Project Guard because I feel like that game has a little bit more potential and a little bit more fluid gameplay. So we'll probably see um, Robot come out first and I think Miyamoto said it's, it's almost done maybe maybe even be out next month or in July. So who knows, it could come out in the, um, the summer and Guard will probably come out again probably in the fall. So Nintendo does seem to be having a packed um, fall lineup of games right now. Now let's see, another thing we'll probably end up seeing is again another, uh, another trailer for Fatal Frame, which will probably get a release for, oh, say, uh, you know, um, October. October. It's definitely going to come out in time for Halloween. That is going to probably be an, a big thing for Nintendo to get the game out for Halloween. So let's see, if you any other games I'm trying to remember, um, we'll probably for sure see. I'm going to get this all out of the way so I can move on to my predictions. Um, oh, yeah, I know we'll probably end up seeing the trailer for Shin Megami Tensei X Fire Emblem. Uh, I do not believe that game will come out in the U.S. until the first quarter of next year. It'll probably come out this holiday in Japan. I think we'll, keep, we'll see a new trailer showing off some more gameplay of the game. Granted, it'll all be Japanese. Oh, another thing I almost completely forgot is Xenoblade Chronicles X will probably get a definite release date. And I'm going to put my money on the games coming out in August. Uh, I don't know why, why I think August. I think this August just feels like, it feels like an appropriate date for that game to come out. And, um, let's see, any other games I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm forgetting about that will probably, for a fact, be there at E3 for the Wii U? We'll probably see more of um, uh, Bandai Namco's Project Treasure, which is supposed to be some sort of team-based free-to-play shooter for the eShop. Not really sure um, what much to say about that. I mean, I don't know. It will probably be out later this year. Um, again, I can't make a, a judgment call on that because I have we know little to nothing about it, outside of like four parts of a face we saw in that early trailer for it. And we will probably get a release date for Pokin on the Wii U, which will probably come out in the first part of next year. So as how it's looking right now for the stuff that we do know about pretty much with the Wii U, the Wii U does have a pretty solid lineup of games, but however, that's not going to be enough to bring the E3. I do believe that Nintendo 
will have some surprises and some curveballs for us, so I'm going to end up talking about for another good part of this video, ex ex um, saying what I predict and expect is going to happen with the Wii U. So, let's get on to that. Alright, so the next thing we're going to talk about now is the predictions. My favorite part of these videos, we like can go a little bit crazy, a little bit wild with these, but you know, these really predictions may be off base, some, there's always a slim chance that something can come true. Like one time I predicted Mario Party on the 3DS, but that was kind of a given. But anyway, so what do I predict for the Nintendo's E3 for the Wii U? Well. The first thing that's, is I'm gonna get out of the way is that the Wii U will get a price cut for later on this year. They will probably cut the Wii U's price to $249.99 for the 32 gigabyte model, or even create a larger model Wii U with 64 gigs of memory or even higher. I believe the Wii U, um, even though it does have enough games to justify the purchase, at its current price, it's it's still um, very hard to entice consumers to buy it because. For $319 at GameStop, you can buy an Xbox One pre-owned, and for $359, you can buy a PS4 pre-owned. So you, Nintendo may want to, you know, cut the price a little bit on the Wii U, so it'll entice people to say, hey, there's Nintendo's new system, it's, a, it's reasonably priced, it has all these great games on the shelf, I'm going to go and buy that. So that's the one thing I think is going to happen, they're going to announce a price cut of about, of about $50 for it. Another thing that's probably going to happen is a Super Mario Sunshine HD remake for the Wii U a la the Wind Waker HD, but probably a bit more built more from the ground up than Wind Waker HD was. It'll probably be a 1080p, more than likely, I don't even know what the frame rate was for Wind for uh, Sunshine I played it. Was it 60 frames per second or 30? I don't remember, but it's going to be up there. It's going to be, you know, remastered, it's going to look beautiful when we see it. And I think you're going to bundle Sunshine HD with the Wii U. Another thing I think you're going to end up showing off for the Wii U is a Zelda teaser trailer. Now, I know um, Anuma said it's not going to be at E3 this year, but that's the thing. Um, Anuma said that um, Zelda U was going to be at E3 in a playable format, I think, at the VGAs. It's, it's, technically speaking, it can still be shown in the Direct, but it won't be at E3 because it won't be on the show floor for people to play and experiment with. So, we'll probably see some sort of teaser for Zelda U, maybe some more of the art direction for the game, so maybe some story mechanics. And I do believe the game is going to be delayed. You know, the trailer um, in the uh, announcement, Anuma said, he said Zelda U may not hit its 2015 release. I think it's not going to. If it does, that's great, but let's be realistic here, it's not. And I think it's probably come out for the 30th anniversary in February of 2016, which is probably a perfect release date for that game. But anyway, we will probably see, you know, some sort of trailer of it in some shape or form. And yeah, that's pretty much. But speaking of 30th anniversaries, we're probably also going to see some Metroid. Maybe um, that's what Retro is working on, or maybe they have Next Level Games working on Metroid, or some studio working on Metroid somewhere, because next year is Metroid's 30th anniversary, so you know, what better way than to have a new Metroid game for the 30th anniversary? And it'll probably come out, um, I don't even know when Metroid first came out, but it'll come out next year. And so, yeah, I know Nintendo did say they're only focusing more so on 2015 releases, but I think it's it's fair to assume we're going to see a few hints of what's coming down the pipeline in 2016. Another thing we'll probably see is um, Animal Crossing U to fill the holiday void that Zelda U is leaving. Um, so people want to say, I think Animal Crossing is a major franchise for Nintendo and it is a big system seller. I know a lot of people who went out and bought a 3DS just for Animal Crossing New Leaf and people who went out and bought a Wii just for Animal Crossing City Folk. So I think it's safe to assume that Animal Crossing U will definitely be a system seller Definitely in Japan because they love their Animal Crossing and I know for sure I'll end up buying that. My only concern about Animal Crossing U is that it'll have its own line of Amiibos and I feel like the Amiibos will be integrated too much into the game, which they better give it a very cheap starting point if they do, like 20 bucks. But um, if not, I hope they use um, Amiibos similar to what they did with the e-reader where you scan the e you swipe the e-reader card and you know you got a free you got a hard to find item or you got a some sort of you know a, a pattern for the closing or you know a, an extra song in your, on your um in your soundtrack you know stuff that you can get in the game on your own means but you know the e-reader cards made them easier so i'm hoping that the amiibos will offer things you know nothing locked behind the game stuff that you know it'll help you get a lot of the harder to find stuff a lot easier and I'm, I'm grateful for that because a lot of those items, the e-reader stuff you had to get from um, um, new um, from the original GameCube one, were a pain to find on your own. 
But that's enough for that. I do think we'll get Animal Crossing U and it'll probably come out this holiday season in Japan at least, maybe in America if we're lucky, and we'll probably see it come, if it's not out this holiday, probably on the first part of 2016. Another thing we'll probably for sure see, but it's still a prediction because it's not confirmed, is Paper Mario U, which will probably also come out around this holiday season. And I do believe that Paper Mario U will end up going back to more of its, uh, more back to its roots of Paper Mario 64 and the Thousand Year Door. How will the gameplay work out? Hopefully more like the turn-based RPG mechanics of the first two games and not a sticker star. I do not like sticker star at all. Honestly, it was probably the worst game in the series. It made me appreciate um, Super Paper Mario a lot more. But, um, yeah, that's that's what I think that we're going to see Paper Mario U and probably be out this holiday season. At the latest, it'll be out in the first part of 2016. Uh, let's see, what else I'm thinking? Oh, yeah, another thing we'll probably end up seeing is The Last Story 2, a sequel to the JRPG on the Wii. I enjoyed it, The Last Story 2. I enjoyed it a lot more than Xenoblade, sue me. And I, I know the developer is current. The, I know Nintendo does own the IP, and the developers who helped made the game want to go back and make another one. So we'll probably see another um, last story title in the near future. Another thing we'll probably see is a teaser for Bayonetta 3. I believe we'll see Bayonetta 3 as a Wii U exclusive because I do believe um, one of the developers of the game did say that Bayonetta was uh, Nintendo was. Bayonetta's new home, so I don't see Bayonetta 3 going to Xbox One and PS4, which is pretty nice. It'll be smart that Nintendo did secure a, you know, a AAA exclusive like that for their system, and to see a Bayonetta 3, which will come, which will help out pretty well bringing more of the core audience to the Wii U, such, such as games like Devil's Third. And speaking of Devil's Third, I also want to think that Nintendo is going to announce at least two more development hell games, that games that were in development, but they were trash due to uh, publishers going under or contracts expiring or something, Nintendo is going to go out and fund those games and bring them to the Wii U as Wii U exclusives. How good will those games be? Well, that is yet to be determined because we don't know what they are yet, if they do happen. And let's see, another thing we'll probably end up seeing is a indie sizzle reel for a lot of, you know, high name indie games coming to Wii U. And I do believe we'll see Five Nights at Freddy's on Wii U because why not? I hope not, but why not? And another, speaking of indies, I do believe that Nintendo will announce a Hat in Time is being published by them in a physical format for the Wii U. I just think it's a smart idea by Nintendo to do that. A Hat in Time is awesome. I have the beta build on my P on PC. I'm loving every minute of it, and Nintendo needs to publish that game as a Wii U exclusive. Seriously, Nintendo, publish it. I'm, it's probably falling on deaf ears, but yeah, that's how excited and how much I love uh, that game. Let's see, another thing um, I want to talk about is, um, oh yeah, more GameCube remasters. I think that the GameCube will end up getting more, uh, the GameCube, the Wii U end up getting more GameCube remastered games, such as, um, I don't know, Eternal Darkness, Luigi's Mansion, um, the only take it off the top of my head right now, maybe Mario Party HD, which will be, I would buy that over Mario Party 10 in a heartbeat. And so yeah, I think, I think we will end up seeing uh, GameCube remasters for the Wii U. And we will probably see a GameCube controller support for those remastered games as well. So the GameCube adapter will have more uses than just for Super Smash Brothers, which will probably be, which will probably come in handy. So what we'll probably end up seeing um, also this year is whatever Retro is working on right now. It is rumored they're working on a brand new science fiction type IP, whatever in the world that could possibly be. Or they're working closely with Mr. Miyamoto on some of his new projects. But we're unsure what they could possibly be, but I'm pretty sure we're going to get a, a sneak peek at whatever Wii U game they're working on right now, whether it's Luigi's Mansion, Metroid, or brand new IP. And I am sure, looking at their past track record of games they've made so far, it is not going to disappoint at all. Another game we're probably going to be looking at is um, probably a Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem series. Um, I believe we're going to see a, game, a sequel to that because, well, a sequel was in development the launch title for the GameCube, but that went under when the development, when the second party development team went under as well, and Nintendo is close to losing the rights to that game as well. So I think to keep those rights, they're either going to remake the first game in HD, like I said, or release an entirely new sequel. Either one is extremely plausible. Oh yeah. I know I forgot about something. Um, Mario Kart 8 DLC, we'll probably see more Mario Kart 8 uh, DLC, but I think what we will see is a Mario Kart 8 Double Dash expansion pack for Mario Kart 8. It'll probably run for like, you know, 20 bucks, but with that, you'll get the Double Dash mechanics, Double Dash, um, you'll have like HD remasters of all the courses from Double Dash, 
or at least uh, maybe two or three cups from Double Dash. And the Double Dash feature probably will not be supported online because I can't see how that's going to work, which would be pretty cool if you can do Double Dash online, but it'd be kind of hard to coordinate since you can't use voice chat in the middle of races, and in Double Dash you had to press both Z at the same time for you and your partner to switch. But I still think Double Dash, uh, Double Dash expansion for Mario Kart 8 would be pretty cool, and they'll also in theory be able to support eight players if done right, you know, GameCube controller support, wink wink Nintendo, haha, uh -huh, nudge nudge. But, uh, yeah, let's see, anything else? Oh yeah, another thing we'll probably see uh, from Nintendo is F-Zero. I've been saying this for years, but this, this has to be the year Nintendo has to bring back F-Zero, because, well, they have to. I mean, they, okay, they don't have to, but they, they should, because the Wii U still needs a lot of killer games, and people don't want to admit F-Zero, I consider F-Zero a hardcore game, one of those games the hardcore audience would go to, a futuristic sci-fi racer, a high-paced, high, pace, high, high fast-paced, high-action racer. And imagine that with online, with like 32 racers online. Now, that would get pretty intense. But um, yeah, before I end this off, I also want to sp uh, spend a little one minute talking about uh, the more DL, uh, not just more virtual console stuff. I know I mentioned there will probably be um, GameCube remasters. But I think they're also going to bring some GameCube games to the eShop. Maybe Melee, maybe some of the Mario Mario Party games. And also they'll probably do a DS virtual console. And I think they're probably going to bring. A Professor Layton collection because level 5 did say that they do want to bring the Layton games to the um, DS. We'll probably also see a Kyle Hyde collection. If you don't know what that is, check it out. You're going to want to play that game. is awesome. Because the developer also wants to see that game brought to Wii U as well, which more people can get to a chance to enjoy those games. And I believe we'll see a Ace Attorney Investigations 1 and 2 collection on the um, Wii U. Finally getting us a chance to play Gaikatum Ken J2 in a reasonable way that supports Capcom and the Ace Attorney franchise. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for my Wii U predictions, and this video is getting pretty long, so what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to get into two videos. Um, and the next video on each video will be talking more about my 3DS predictions. Um, it won't be as long as this because, you know, I, I believe this, I firmly believe the 3DS is on its last leg, and there won't be that much, you know, left coming for it in the pipeline, but who knows? I have my list for the 3DS. It's about as long as the Wii U one, so let's see how long that video will turn out to be. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, sure to subscribe for more content on my channel, and let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. What are your predictions and expectations for E3 this year? I'd love to know what those are. And as always, everyone, this is Gamma Lad, signing off.